YouTube. Hi, everybody. Oh, oh I already messed up. Welcome, Good evening, everybody. All. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, this is our take two of a Chiron evening. Now, if you missed part one, great, because we're going to do it again, but even better. Um, so, you know, the hope tonight is that <clears throat> You'll find some new learnings and some new insights and takeaways to apply to your life. And, um, and um, we can hear you, Rick, if I just in case you heard. wanted to know. Um, but I think the goal this evening, Rick, Rick C. and I, um, is to go through the journey ourselves. So we'll take you through um, from the beginning of the Chiron discovery and archetype of Chiron and then go all the way to what that means to you yeah. individually and then what it means for us collectively and, and then if we have time we'll look at some of your Chirons and then we'll also try to squeeze in um the Chiron return that's coming up oh, they're going to be in 2027 so hopefully that'll be um a good plan does that sound good I hope it does, that's what we're doing <laughs> All right. Now with that, we're going to take it away. Just give me one second. I'm going to share my screen. And then we will pass the baton over to Rick Kempe. Thank you so much. You know, this has been such an amazing experience because something as important as Chiron can be there is always more to learn and um a while back Claudia and i actually were having the pleasure of going to see zane stein through a zoom and it just reinvigorated all of our passion mm -hmm. so i'm going to go ahead and uh <clears throat> get us started here and uh, rick i'm sorry if i can just uh mention um, yeah, I'll remind you of the um, the outline, but also for those um, that want to add to the discussion on the mm -hmm. chat, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, this part that starts out with our healing journey, how did we have that titled that we're discussing that? Which part am I hitting? You're now going to go into, I'm going to bring up some of the words, some of the key words. Yes. Think of Chiron. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that large enough for people to see? Mm -hmm. We're wanting you guys to go ahead. We're going to open things up a little differently than Rick's done them in the past. We're going to invite you to use the chat feature, if you wish. Capture thoughts so that they're not lost to you and questions that we will get to later in the discussion period after the first hour. The uh, hope is that you could start to engage with yourselves and with other people that you discuss astrology regarding. And that way, there is so much to grow through. And part of it might be triggered by anything, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um things that i was thrilled to see here the bridge and bridging um things that you know doorways i think pain is a doorway it's a gateway for memory and memory triggers growth and learning ecological i actually refer to that in my intro uh and environmental friendly fostering how important it is to go ahead and speak in life into the lives of the young. So it's not just fostering in a constructed way of these are foster kids, but the older generation passing wisdom down to the younger and affirming the younger where perhaps they didn't get affirmation from their family of origin. Um, the guidance, healing agents in medical astrology, it's been found that Chiron deals with a lot of uh, chemicals as well as diseases. So that will be something for anybody medically in curious. You'll find information about that. Um, other things that are really 
powerful. The music therapy. Uh, and uh, there's another one, sound therapy. Yep. When you think of Chiron, you know it's part horse. And you can almost feel the same way standing at the side of a parade where the drums are echoing their vibration to the pavement and you feel it in your bones when they're passing by. You can feel that drum in your stomach. That connection really puts you in touch with Mother Earth and the heartbeat of the human experience. And we are connected to the divine feminine through that, through the humanity of the half man that Chiron is. We have the common human experience that is conscious, and then through the intuitive part that is part animal, part horse, we have that connection to the divine feminine and the unconscious. Bridging the conscious and the unconscious is absolutely phenomenal when you look at Chiron to understand the whole kitten caboodle. And, you know, I was a weird kid. I even wanted to, my one of my things that I wanted to do was bridge the gap between the conscious and the unconscious. Uh, um, the sign ruled by Chiron, it, it, it is that's a really good question Teresa. subject of debate <laughs> yeah yeah um i i like the idea of trying to find one and i'm still partial i've heard zane's thoughts he doesn't like to see it there because as a comet and uh, he doesn't see the, it functions a lot like a comet as well as an asteroid and planetoid so he's sort of like the jury should still be out and right. he sees uh, evidence for recognizing the relevance it has to both Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sag in different ways. And I always thought, let's say it rules Virgo and maybe is exalted in Sag. But honestly, I really liked what he had to say about Scorpio and Libra. So please keep your mind open yeah. and look into it for yourselves and come back and have another discussion. If I can um, sure. just uh, interrupt for a minute, Rick. So, um, Teresa, I, I think it it's not one of those, um, it's not a planet. Um, so it's not a definitive sign, like, you know, Mars is ruled by Aries, that kind of thing. Aries is ruled by Mars. Um, but, you know, like our own Rick, Rick D., um, he associates it very much with Virgo. Um, we we keep mentioning Rick Kempe and I um, attended this uh, lecture by Zane Stein, who is one of the people at the very beginning when it was discovered who helped kind of create a lot of the archetypal, the words you see on the screen and a lot of the, the first, which who knows, what, what does it take to, really understand a new planetoid, a new asteroid. So he was one of those people that was really involved in the whole process from the very beginning. So you'll me we'll mention his name from time to time because he really is one of the, um, you know, the ones He's that- He's ground really... one of the groundbreakers. Yeah, yeah. He so... had one of the, he was probably the most well-known who actually had a copy given to him of the ephemeris for it. So he his research was able to start very early. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's, you know, you should definitely should look him up. His name is Zane Stein. Um, there's a few people, and we'll 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 probably mention those as we move through the evening. Um certainly. Shall we um go on to Yes. Okay. Oh, are you not able to see the list? Oh, I am. Um, Teresa, as an example, can you see the list? I can see the list. It's Anita. Uh, I, okay, what great. What ex could you go over that just a little bit more, that list? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, Thank you. not a problem. Um, I was cherry picking just to give you an idea. There are so many parts to it. Yeah. Herbal medicine, Reiki, which is your hands-on energetic healing, shaman because the practice is very uh, 
given towards spiritualism as well as journeying into the underworld. Um, transition, times of change, a turning points, turning the corner. They are all very powerful times. Um, in your own journey of dealing with Chiron, Anita, you may find your experience of a Chironic experience may have had none of some of these but very much uh, quite a few of others so keep in mind it's going to resonate for you differently than it does for another and and when i look at it do i not think too deeply about make a mental note as to the ones that speak to you right okay. and there's definitely going to be some that do and some that don't and that's the thing with kind of, you know, with a lot of things in astrology, you know, just because the first house, we know it as the body, uh, that doesn't mean it doesn't mean a lot of other things that we don't normally speak of. And it doesn't mean that's not true. It just, it may not be your experience. These are some of the words. There are more, many more words, but um, some that are probably top of mind um and i would argue that the reason for such a large list is that chiron was deeply well versed in so many things he taught the heroes so, so many subjects yeah. it crosses boundaries he was not just a specialist in one field unless you want to say it's humanity so it has to cover everything that's right. one of the things that makes him good okay. for astrology okay and i can see that thread the thread's really obvious through yeah. all of these thank you you're welcome thank you for asking okay and here's the discovery chart that we're starting with it's super enjoyable and exciting and amazing um we certainly included eris we couldn't not and um the uh Ascendant being at 26 degrees of Sagittarius strikes me as very intriguing because that has the galactic center of the universe conjoined the ascendant on the first in, in the first house. And it feels to me like Chiron opened our consciousness to our own identity that we bring to the world to be very important. I think that is because Sag is about broadening your perspective, looking beyond your locality, considering ideas that are bigger than what you would normally think. Mm -hmm. This is not the under 12 year old type of things that you learn. This is the high school and collegiate and life experience moving through beyond proficiency in into the doctorate level and beyond. Um, Chiron ends up in that fourth house. It definitely feels like you're learning about your own psyche when and how do you assert your will? How do you recognize yourself? Because your wounds will come from people who are not recognizing you. So the cure is to be responsible for the wounds you've experienced. Uh, uh, the healing journey part of it. Right. Be responsible in that way. Between Jupiter and the moon in Gemini, that is six cancer? degrees. To tw I'm sorry, Cancer. Thank you. That is um, a six degree span in that conjunction. It's certainly notable. And then you yeah. have um, the Scorpio span from the sun at nine degrees up to 17 degrees for mercury and there's some more interesting things i'll touch on with that later on after we get deeper into the discovery chart when we bring the next one up and nessus it's hard to see here but it's in small print between jupiter and the moon in cancer that is the asteroid that was named after a centaur a centaur who got into a kerfuffle and was 
basically guilty of being an abusive perpetrator against Her- Hercules' wife, De Janeiro. And that's the asteroid of abuse. But uh, let me say the abuser. So when it's triggered, it, 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 it it's very c- careful the way you have to interpret it. Let's just say the emotions of the moon that are enlarged by the presence of Jupiter, you're getting all these emotions. To me, that can suggest there is a lot of overinflated emotional responses to that experience of trying to wrestle with where did the taking advantage and abuse come from? Where did the wound come from? Chiron is alerting us to our wounds. Um, I'll also mention that uh, Chiron is within one degree of Sedna. We had some little bit of discussion about Sedna at different times here and there. And that is another divine feminine asteroid that is so fully connected to finding your voice and growing through cultural misunderstanding. So that being a part of this psyche is very telling Mm -hmm. as we go through. And, and Chiron was discovered in the sign of Taurus. And Taurus can rule that. that, that throat? Brain. Yeah, yeah. The the throat chakra, the mm-hmm. voice, the being heard, the being acknowledged. Like uh, Taurus is the second house of, you know, the, the self, self-worth. the value. Yeah, self-worth. So I could see that connection there with Sedna. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'll also hit on Mars. There are elements that just emphasize the fact that Mars is the energy and drive of your chart. And when we go, if we should get so far as to pay attention to the uh, first square of Chiron, where Chiron was it three degrees of Leo? Mm-hmm. That Mars is very important. It's really helping flesh out boundaries. And that occurred in August on the 22nd of 91. So you would have seen people really start to open up in discussing boundaries. Yeah. Saturn can join the part of fortune. I really do see that um, there is a lot of joy to be had in that fullness of expression that Leo comes with. Um, Where is, um, where is Saturn in this chart? I'm looking at- 29 degrees of Leo. Two screens. Oh, there it is. Yeah. 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 Within less than a half a degree yep. away from the part of fortune. So discipline is key. Keeping in uh, and continuing to express oneself is key. As we get towards that 10th house that is so jam packed, you have conjoined that mid heaven, Ophelia which is the asteroid that tells us about bringing forward so much emotion Mm -hmm. that it could be overwhelming. And that is part of that North node, but it's in Libra. So at some level we are expected and better off Mm -hmm. to be trying to keep it in balance. Feel the emotion. Don't deny it. Right. Keep it in balance. Uh, The North node and Pluto and Vesta are, as well as the prenatal solar eclipse and Venus. They are all in what is sometimes referred to as a rolling conjunction, where they are just like degree after degree after degree in alignment. So transformation from Pluto, investing your life in holding that balance between self and other, because boundaries and self and other 
are so many strong parts of the message of what it is to be wounded. Because if you keep that boundary after you're an, a, old enough, you are not going to receive other people's junk. They may try throwing it, but that does not mean you're obligated right. to experience it. Yes, yes. Um, Vesta, what you're invested in in life, uh, and clearly Chiron comes into the consciousness, invested in this idea of keeping balance. Uh, and that's also what's being taught. Uh, the psyche is the next one that happens to be in the early degree of Scorpio as is the sun at nine degrees of Scorpio. So they're publicly open, but they get the soul of Chiron gets a little deeper with that sun being in Scorpio uh, with, with Uranus close beside it, which right. is another one of the sky gods. For those of you interested, you could really do some unpacking of let's just say astrological daddy issues if you look at uranus the sky god who is the father of saturn the outermost planet visible to the naked eye who is mm -hmm. then father to zeus or jupiter so the process was that saturn overthrew uranus and then feared being overthrown by a child, so had swallowed all of his children upon birth until his wife snuck Zeus out and wrapped up a stone for Saturn to swallow. And in that way, that's how Jupiter was able, Zeus Jupiter was able to grow up, come back, knock dad off his high horse. It ended up being a little a, a little bit of history repeating itself. Yeah. Mercury is also in that 11th house with Uranus, as well as Ceres and Cerberus. I want to go ahead and take a look at my notes to say a little something about Mercury and Cerberus. So in the course of researching this situation i looked at that date of august 22nd of of 91 to see what was going on in the world at the time of that first square mm -hmm. and it led me to one man and then another who were involved in the mental health field one of them happened to be by the name of clifford beers so I'm going to tell you a little bit about his story just for starting. So Mercury is, as we know, the mer uh, the ruler of both um, Gemini and Virgo. So that means we're looking at the sixth and ninth house, dealing with daily stuff, health, mental health, co-work, working situations, because it deals with co-workers also. Right. Um small animals like your emotional support pets yes <laughs> and then we have the ninth house of the higher mind and spirituality ethics these are things that chiron taught about at the higher level for all of his foster kids shall we say um as well as the daily exercise that was involved with hand-to-hand -hand combat, which would have been under exercise in the sixth house and the herbalism and the medicine. So for those looking for tight orbs, please keep in mind the strength and the influence um, of Pallas Athena as one of the first asteroids discovered, which certainly speaks to its size and then looking at the cluster of, of it as well so i'm trying to see where do we have palace i don't i don't 
see it. Oh, you don't recognize it as fast because I know it's new. Yeah, but. Um, one degree Scorpio. Yeah. Palace is at one degree Scorpio. Okay. At two degrees Scorpio is Asclepius, one of the physicians of Greek history that was trained by Chiron. And then at six degrees, you have Hygieia conjoined Weiner at seven degrees, and then the sun at nine. I'm just going to deal with that Scorpio collection for the moment, if you will. Mm -hmm. And basically... The thing that I am seeing here is palace is all about wisdom and also war, knowing when to go to war and then peace. Asclepius, uh, much like, oh, and oh, I forgot to mention Hippocrates. Hippocrates is in Taurus at one degree. Uh, less than a degree and a half, I believe, from Chiron. This is where you see the medical ethics and competence. And there was a lot being done with upping the game with the advent of Chiron. You really saw medical ethics coming into the forefront. Um, I'm sure people can remember we had a lot of discussion about euthanasia back in those days. Oh, yeah. There are changes that happened in the mental health field that started trying to break down some barriers and many other different specifics. So there's that cluster with um, Palace and looking at the Scorpio uh, bunch yeah. inner cosmos is in there at two degrees of Scorpio which discusses bridge uh, the bridge between worlds so there it you know ethics is oftentimes considered something perhaps of the philosophical but when you're dealing with ethics and medicine you're bridging philosophy and medicine yeah you're uh, also bridging it with the law. Yep. So there are many ways these are interactive. There's a lot. Um, there's a lot on this chart, and I know that it's it's a lot to look at just physically, but it is interesting to see the connection between. You know, absolutely. The, the times I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, you know, a, an adult then, but I do. I always ask people, uh, what was it like? And I, I definitely ask Rick this. Uh, what was it like to put Chiron on your charts when you don't, you didn't, how long did it take? And what was that like? And I, that can't be easy to, to integrate a whole new energy into interpretation and just in and, and your life in general. Um, and, and then you add the asteroids, but it's all, it kind of all, connects do we um do we want to move on to um we sure can i just i'll just go ahead and hit one uh, one or two more things here yeah Ceres and cerberus cerberus is the hellhound that guards your deepest pain Ceres is the earth mother goddess so you can see where the nurturing of early childhood wounds mm -hmm. can be some of the deepest and most repressed mm -hmm. um Neptune uh, is also in trine to that south node, Eris. I would definitely keep your eyes on that because there are some interesting asteroids that connect in the trine position of Leo that I'm going to go ahead and refrain from going into and let you know that if you're interested, you can send me a message and I will go ahead and email you my notes that include things that are not going to be shared this evening because it's just good. too much. So let's go ahead to the next yeah. place. Yeah. 
Um, we could, I wonder if just for the sake of time, I'm not sure if we should come back to the uh, Chiron return. I mean, not a, a, the first square. Um, maybe we'll come back to it unless you want to go over it, but. Well, um, I'll, I'll give it a few minutes. Then we can move on from there. Yeah. Come back if we have need. So yeah. here at the first square, and I'm going to go ahead and look at my copy of that because uh, I have it. Ah. Uh, Give me a second. I'm trying to get my uh, cursor to recognize what's going down here. So while you find that, I'm sure um, just so people are familiar, um, you know, Chiron uh, was discovered at three Taurus. So the next sign that would square the next time that it would form a 90 degree angle. And it would be applying, you know, the, the time before August 17th, 1991, but it became exact on that day. That's the first time that it would square itself. So you would find some of the, to, the, the story. Right. Uh, you know, the story developing of Chiron. You know, it'll be interesting for us because we're in a lifetime where we can see the first Chiron return of Chiron. <laughs> right. And that'll happen in 2026, but uh 27, but this is the first time it squared itself, August of 91. Now, I will say this about that square. Ethics and morality were key teachings of Chiron. So when you consider social justice, mm -hmm politics at this time in 91 mikhail gorbachev and uh, was struggling at the fall of russia being set to be replaced by um boris yeltsin i believe his first name was boris and that is intriguing that that area was totally being catalyzed there was a catalyst of this yeah. movement of chiron to consider ethics and boundary issues the same way we're seeing with ukraine and other elements right right the return is going to be in 26 i definitely think that it would be interesting for those who like to watch world events to look at that for themselves oh absolutely yeah that's that, going to be yeah that's going to be really interesting we see saturn at this time opposing chiron as far as the transits of of that square mm -hmm. and the interesting thing about that that I find is that Mars is right up there. The natal Mars is yep. where transiting Chiron is. Now I actually looked at some asteroids and Amicus was a, di was a different centaur, all rooted in friendship. And there was another asteroid that's not it's a personal name asteroid called heller and this was the same as the name of um, a psychologist who was given an award in august of 91 oh and his award his name was kenneth heller uh -huh. and um it, the asteroid i used for kenneth in the discovery chart Kenneth is at 1839 of Gemini, and it's only minutes away, like maybe third, uh, I'm sorry, seconds away, because both Amicus and Kenneth are at 18 degrees, 39 minutes. Wow. So they're just seconds apart, which right. is so doggone tight, you can't believe how important that is. And they happen to be also conjoined 
the asteroid armor, which has been used to recognize how your friends that are protective of you and they are part of your inner circle and the people that you work things out with. Well, Amicus and Heller are on either side of Chiron in the return chart, or the, I'm sorry, this first square chart that we're looking at, all surrounding Mars. Well, there was a huge push in mental health rights it, at that time. There were many different advances. And pri what made it easier for Hel Heller, Kenneth Heller, was the work of a prior individual by the name of Clifford Beers. Well, the beer is much like wine, some part of the story that brings to bear the death wound that would affect Chiron, where the melee of the centaurs broke out because they got it drunk on wine. And <laughs> that beer is an asteroid. And it is the transit of beer and Mars are smack dab on top of the natal position for the asteroid of Fraternitas, which is brotherhood. So to unpack that, I would say, let me just say that the work of Clifford Beers was such that he was in and out of mental institutions in the 19th century, worked himself out. In the early 20th century, he was working on mental health patients' rights. We had an understanding of what shell shock was yeah. with World War I. And what it showed us was that even healthy people under extreme and prolonged stress can suffer from PTSD, which can result in other mental health issues that would usually be on the neurotic neurosis side, as opposed to schizophrenic and a different type of pathology. So there is a lot that can tack on to the PTSD if it is neglected. But the work of Beers and Heller was to bring people together in community. So they decriminalized, Beers started with decriminalizing mental health so that people could get out of the prisons and into mental hospitals. And then when they were in mental hospitals and they were still receiving poor treatment, the work became, let's deinstitutionalize yeah. mental health sufferers, try and get them into communities because right. community is key. So, That's one of the things you see with Chiron. So the that was at the square? Here. That was at the square? Yeah. 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 So it's, it's quite vital. Right. It's like the um the theme of Chiron. Yeah. Um, weaved in to that Absolutely. to that time. It, you know, probably didn't come easily. I think. Um, I'm going to share my screen again, and they will go over um, some of the uh, sim symbolism, the orbit of yes. uh, Chiron. And I think, oh, sorry, hold on. I didn't hit share. This is where, where it says it's, it's a lot of buttons. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of buttons. <laughs> um yeah, so if you can see the 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 screen now, I know it's not um, the whole screen, um, but if you take a look at, you know, sometimes I love astrology because it can be the symbolism of it is taken from something that can be so literal. Um, so, um, what was Chiron's mother's name? Phylera. 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 Philera. When he was born, she was mortified. I mean, she was absolutely horrified 
that she had a baby that looked like him and she abandoned him. So, you know, because he looked like this, he was half man, half horse. And the thing is, it's, it's so symbolic of how he felt, how he perceived his experience from day one, which was, he was rejected. He was, his wound was archetypally, it was rejection, abandonment, not feeling good enough. Um, and he's known as the wounded healer for a lot of the reasons that Rick talked about, because eventually he became a, a healer himself because he was so wounded and had to learn and actually was taken um, um, under somebody's wing and became a really fantastic teacher and healer. Um, but the thing about Chiron uh, in the sky is that it's, if you look at the, the, the green circle, let's just look at the green circle. That's where Saturn, this, the orbit of Saturn, right? That's the green circle. And then let's look at Uranus. Uranus is the outer circle. Well, Chiron sits right in the middle and it's a wonky, weird orbit. It's not exactly round, although it looks kind of round-ish in this picture. It's not exactly, it's a little, it's a little weird. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because again, it's symbolic of that energy. And so Anytime we go beyond Saturn, archetypally, we're thinking subconscious. The personal planets, those are more um, conscious to us. You know, our Mercury, our Venus, our Mars, those are conscious energies that we express in our life. But then as we go uh, beyond Saturn, it gets more subconscious. So you think about, um, you know, Saturn, uh, Chiron sitting right in between Uranus and Saturn. It, to me, it's it's kind of symbolic of having to deal with something very likely very karmic and also individuation. So that's a big theme as well for for um I was surprised not to see that word in the in the the list we saw because it it is a big theme. Uh, when I when I learn about Chiron, about you know the the individuating and how how that looks when it's healthy, when it isn't, and when we've kind of not integrated that in a healthy way, the glyph for Chiron. So the the picture on the right, this actual picture right here, you'll see a million version of this of these on the internet or anywhere in a book, but this one right here. Um, the re the way it was created was that it was created with um, they they made it was mathematical. Don't ask me how because I don't really not explain it very well, but I'll try. <laughs> the idea was to um, it was supposed to be an X that was cut in the middle. It had a dagger going right through it, and at the bottom of the dagger was a circle, so symbolizing uh, wholeness. So this is what I mean when I when I talk about sometimes things can be not as um, not as out there. They're kind of more uh, the energy of this the archetype here is really symbolized with the the half man half horse, the feeling of rejection. But in the the wound, the the wound wants to be brought to the awareness. It wants to be conscious. And so when we look at our journey, when we look at our Chiron journey, like Rick was talking, we saw the first square. Um, you know, there were events around that time collectively, you know, around the world. In our charts, in your chart individually, there's gonna be events, there's gonna be people, there's going to be experiences that you had to remind you of your womb. You probably don't have that consciously. Oh, you're not consciously aware of it yet, but that's its role in your, in your chart. Um, so the, and then the, the, the uniting of the half man, half human 
and integrating that, the conscious and the unconscious, the seen and the unseen, the fragmented and the whole. Um, so hopefully this is making sense. I was talking to Rick, Rixie, <laughs> and I was I told him about a quote that I recently uh, was listening to an audio book. Does anybody here, are you familiar with Gabor Mate? Um, he's a really, really, you got to look him up. He's He's very... He's been around for a long time, but he's become really popular. Holocaust survivor. Yes. He he was a home. As an infant. Yeah. He's a famous um, psychologist. And he said, it, I, I, I had to write this down when I heard it, reminded me of Chiron. Trauma fosters a shame-based view of the self. So Chiron can be can be seen as that place where we have felt trauma. Now you can you can interpret the word trauma in a million different ways. Some people have horrific inhumane things done to them. And sometimes, you know, trauma can be uh in your life, it can just be the fact that, you know, somebody pushed you in the in the lunchroom in fourth grade. So it, it's the perception that we have of ourselves. But shame is a word that I was surprised was not there. But I, you know, I think of um, when I think of the word trauma, and it's um, part of the healing of our wound. And the healing of the wound starts in the development. In other words, you're in your childhood. The wound is also developing, just as much as everything else is your healthy habits, your body, your relationships, it's all kind of coming together and you don't realize it until many years later. Um, so sometimes we're not conscious of it until much later. And that's, I think this is one of the examples is Chiron is like, we're not really conscious of it until much later. So when I was looking at, you know, I knew that this talk was, uh, coming up, I was thinking about my my own chart and, you know, thinking I like to use examples of people in my life and people I know and myself and kind of test it out. So I would encourage you to look at your own charts. And um, oftentimes we need to look at the how, not oftentimes, every time you need to look at the house, because a lot of people, probably a lot of you right now, have, I don't know, let's just say Chiron in uh, Virgo. Let's just say, well, many people are going to have Chiron in Virgo. Where's yours sitting? And so think about what is the ruling planet of that sign, that Chiron sign, and what house is that in? I kind of, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Mel Melanie Reinhardt here, but I, I heard her talk about this recently. So let's say if Linda's, um, you know, Linda's Chiron is uh, in Virgo, well, where is her Mercury sitting? What house is it sitting in? It could be a clue for you. Um, I tested it out and it was definitely a clue for me. <laughs> it was definitely a, a clue for me. Um, and. One thing that I learned from the the lecture we heard with Zane is that uh, because Chiron is on the can work on the subconscious level, so it's it's think about it. It's it's twelfth house stuff. It's 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 not open, right? It can be thought um, that it was struggles or experiences that your parents, so before you came into this life that your parents were experiencing. Um, so again, I tested this and I, I was surprised at how, you know, how much it told me for myself. So one thing I think we'd like to take um, some time today is to, to, to kind of take you through the, the journey of, you know, your Chiron, your first square, your opposition, your third square, and the return, because, because they can be really telling. There's a story that's being told, and you're the storyteller, and you're the problem solver, and you are the healer, and you're all of those things. 
Um, so maybe we'll have time to do that. But it's that thing in your life that you're not aware of that you struggle with. And then at some point, you almost have no choice but to look at it. Is that making sense? I think, too, if we can look at Chiron as a teacher, and we are the hero of now, of our own journey, mm -hmm. Chiron, as he seeks to help us heal, will be our guide in an underworld journey as we unpack our stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's how we become the heroes of our own journey. Right. And, you know, again, you know, sometimes it's really simple. The glyph for Chiron is a K. It's a key. It's a K for a key. <laughs> and it is a key. It can be a key to healing. Should you choose to do that? Not everybody is going to. Not everybody's going to have the kind of experiences that I bet the people in this group are looking for in terms of looking at their shadow self, looking at the things you struggle with, being honest with oneself. Obviously, not not everybody's like that. And we come in contact with those people. And, um, you know, we kind of all bump around each other <laughs> and then it becomes really messy. But. Um, let me share my screen for just a second because while you bring that up, I'm going to go uh, gather your thoughts. I'm going to share a little bit more about um, Chiron's beginning. Mm -hmm. Chiron comes uh, has the same root word as hand, chire. That's where we get chiromancy for palmistry. Oftentimes, all the children of Chiron and his wife, Caraclo, they all have a gift of prophecy. Prophecy tends to sometimes come into the lives of people who are heavily Chironic, whether it is simply wisdom that helps them see, oh, this isn't gonna go well, or if it's a re regular divination method. Ethics tend to do that. You seem to learn about history, you know what's going to repeat. Right. While right. he was in tryst with Philera, while Saturn was in tryst with Philera, Saturn's wife Rhea comes to interrupt. In order to escape, Saturn turns into a horse. But Philera was this nymph. She did not know him as a horse. And Saturn, now the horse, runs off. That's how we end up with the half horse, half man. And that's why she's so aghast. And so he was abandoned by his father at the point of conception. So there's daddy issues to start. Mm -hmm. And then she she gives birth. And then the mama drama starts. So there is abandonment. That is a key to many of those wounds. And yeah. a lot of what we were dealing with in regard to Deneen Joyner's uh ancestral trauma yeah that we were focused on for the earlier part of december so this is all key stuff it's all key and i told rick today um uh, melanie um by the way melly reinhardt is is known as one of those um writers that has been kind of uh really connected to to chiron so that's why I bring up her name again. Um, she spoke about, uh, I thought about Deneen because she spoke about the fact that um, asteroids, actually she called them centaurs. The well, that's what the these ones yeah. are. Um, Polis and Nessus and yep. Amicus and Solaris. That's what they are. So our ancestors and the centaurs, they live energetically, mythically, in the same realm. So they're not with they're the not ancestors. With the ancestors, right. And they are their their job. So ancestors are like our uh our guidance system if we choose to listen and be aware, our protectors. Um, and they they kind of work together 
to help us in this life, in this physical incarnation. And she talked about how, you know, they're, it's, it's actually really, they're very much in sync as far as us following our purpose and our ancestors want us to follow our purpose, follow our heart, listen to our intuition, and so do the centaurs. It's it's really interesting. So I, I get the connection there that you're talking about, Rick. Um, I thought that was really, really interesting. So let me see about what was I going to bring up? I was going to share my screen and I was going to share the screen of the um, okay. The one thing I wanted to bring up was, um, we talked about the healing journey, right? Mm -hmm. Well, not, not everybody is able to integrate the healing in this life. Not everybody is conscious, aware, cares. Um, and so what happens is they they end up either you know what is hurting them they do unto others so i brought this up because it's a it's a good example um so the the victim the the persecutor and the rescuer you know you're either you stay the victim or you become a healer in, in of sorts, or you become the oppressor. And I can tell you examples of, of both where people have been able to look at themselves, honestly gone through some horrible things and to really, really start to really use their own healing as a mode of also helping others, but also those that really haven't. Because let's face it, not everybody is going to, and and we kind of well, know it takes that. work. Yeah, <laughs> and some it, it, really it, it's are not, not interested. accidental. No, they're they're not interested, um, and they're interested in staying victim and or persecutor. So it's it is one of those things that, you know, I I very thank God I very early on realized how. Uh, I think it was because when, when I became a mom, so I am going to be putting all my stuff onto this kid. And it was at my Chiron opposition. Um, we can talk about this now. The, the, the opposition really showed me how relationships, me relating to the people in my life, how that my stuff was coming up. I thought it was them, but it really wasn't them. And it's never really them. It's always pointing the finger back to us. And um, thank God I realized it when my, you know, when my daughter was really, really quite, she was a baby, a newborn baby. Um, and that was at the time of my opposition. Um, during the third square, um, so I have, Chiron in the 12th house, I've always felt, you know, a, a sense of isolation, uh, a sense of kind of, you know, feeling like the outsider in, in some ways, in a lot of, a lot of ways. Well, the third square, that was another cycle of repeating that um, because I then moved to Georgia. So my point in saying all this is that it's not just a one-time thing, and it's certainly not going to end with the Chiron return. So many of you who are beyond 50, 51, 52, you're still dealing with it, and you're going to continue to deal with it. We all will. Um, and I would. that's why I think it's. this is not something that just kind of goes, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm done with that, and then you can just move on with your life, because oftentimes... You're going to have other stuff going on in your chart. You're going to have other really important stuff. And you can say, well, yeah, that was because Pluto was squaring this. Yeah. And that's just adding to the whole kind of, you know, I call it a pot roast. I just throw everything in the pot roast. And, and it's bringing to your awareness the things that you're supposed to be looking at about yourself. 
it's not really about the experiences or the other people. Um, but that is one thing that I think we wanted to bring up is the, you know, if you do want, um, and I can certainly pull it up on Solifier, if you, I encourage you to look at um, when, when was my first square, right? So it's going to be three signs after your, your natal Chiron. And when did it oppose itself? For the ladies that are listening, I, I also was, I've heard this a couple of times. There's a sense of freedom that is going to come around menopause. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's because you're now going to be living more authentically. And the ladies that I think find that they are more aware of their healing have less symptoms of this. And I heard this recently through Melanie again, um, but we can apply this, the same concept to men as well. Um, the more aware you are. Uh, so just a question for the group, does anybody know or want to to look at where their Chiron is in their chart? Teresa. <laughs> I don't have your chart, Teresa, but we can plug it in. <laughs> or you can just tell if you know what sign it's in, right? Then we can, we can. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> I, that's oh, okay. the one I don't, that's why I can't find here. Oh, okay. Chart. I'm looking at my chart, but I can't seem to find Chiron for some reason. Gotcha. Linda knows hers. Uh, Teresa, if you want to message me i can help you find something if you want to just throw it in the chat to me it's almost like okay. a puzzle that you're but that you're putting together when you when you think about this stuff and it's a fun puzzle because it always leads to something that can help you understand yourself on a deeper level which is great okay so i'm gonna here i'll talk to linda while you do that unless sure. okay Hi, Linda. Hello. <laughs> okay, so yours is in what house? Second house. Okay. You know, it's in the, you know, the last, I think it's the 27th degree of Sag second house. Okay. Something along those lines. So then, you know what? Do you care if I plug in your chart? No, not at all. Okay. Um, that way we can do it right here. Um, have you taken a look at this before? I, uh, you know, while you were talking, I pulled up my chart and just checked what house it was in. Cause I okay. couldn't remember where it was. What, I was um, surprised. I was surprised, but it makes total sense. What's your is. birthday? October 4th, 1951. And what time? Uh, 946, I think. I'll know that if the chart's right when I look at it. I think it's 946. PM? AM. Okay. Oh, surprisingly, it's, it, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> in what, what town? Um, Butler, Pennsylvania. Butler? Butler. Okay. As in like a butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's where I'm actually at lately. In Butler? Oh, yeah. What's you doing in Butler? Oh, I've been here for a little while. Yeah, I grew up along the Allegheny. Oh, where? Lower Burrow, actually. Oh, Lower Burrow. I'm like north of there. I grew up in Parker, which is up above, you know, on the Allegheny. It would be north of East Brady. Right. Yeah. Upriver, as we say. Yes. Yeah, I'll be going to Lower Burl this week. Isn't that funny? Lower Burl. Small world, right? Mm-hmm. Are you a 20, uh, 20 that, degree rising? Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. Everything, Everything's in Libra. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a, the charts. It must be 946 because... Um, I was trying to think 946 or 947, but the chart's 100% correct. So Okay. 
So what we're going to do is, oh man, it went away for you guys. It's okay. I have it. Okay. So you, you can see it now, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're going to go to, we got to get to Pisces. That's when it's going to square it. And so we go from 1951. Uh, okay, to approximately October 4th, 1967. Um, let me just see. It went retrograde that year, so it's going to wobble a little bit. Um, that's your first square. Wait a minute. Okay, let's just say February 4th, 1968. It's, it's take or, you know, take or um, subtract or um, add a few months, but around that time, that was your first square. So then we're gonna take it to, to Gemini, right? So write that down. Okay. Think about what was going on in your life around that time. You don't have to tell us, but I just kind of wanted you to keep that in mind. So now we're gonna take your Chiron to Gemini and that's gonna be your opposition. And that's gonna be um, around 1988. Uh, we're almost there. Okay. May 4th, 1988, give or take few weeks. Okay, sorry, May 25th, 1988, that's your opposition. What was going on in your life? Um, it could have been within the context of a relationship, um, not necessarily, but oftentimes that could happen. So then we go to your next square. So that's gonna be in Virgo. That one was fast. See, it moves differently in different so, signs. Um, that's because of signs of long ascension and short ascension. When it ends up striking you earlier than the average person, mm -hmm. that suggests you chose a more difficult wound. Mm. Does that make sense, Linda? Say that again. When the average is figured out, and it hits you with that first square younger than average, that means you chose a life with a harder, diff more difficult wounding. <laughs> because you were too emotionally immature to figure out how to put into words what you were experiencing. It was just not easy enough for you to figure out what was upsetting you exactly. It was quite the big deal. Right. So that third square happened August 25th of 1995. Think about that. Chew on that for a while. And then let's go to your return. So that's going to be <clears throat> in Sag. Sorry, I have to move this box out of the way. Okay. That one was quick too. Uh, okay, months. All right. Around 2001. That seems fast. November 15th, 2001. Again, give or take a couple of months. And the truth is, especially with your return, you know, a lot of times I find with these, these kind of milestone transits, you really get it a couple of years, a couple of years down the line. Now we've had enough time. Uh, 2001 was 
over 20 years ago. So you've had enough time. Um, and that, that one was, uh, it fell near your ascendant. Well, that, I mean, I remember November, 2001 really clearly. I had just, turned, I had just turned 50. Um, you know, I was living in, I was, I had a house. I was living, living in a house on my own that I had just rehabbed after getting out of a relationship. Um, you know, um, but I was just, mm -hmm. I was like lost. Yeah. I was just lost. Yeah. And, and it goes, I mean, when I think about the, the Chiron in the second house, um, that's, it's not just about material stuff. It's about safety and security and feeling like you're going to be able to survive things. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, that makes uh, the fact that Chiron is sitting there is a, makes a hundred percent of sense to me. Yeah. And I think about that first opposition. I don't have as clear a thought about, um, about the, about the 1988 one, you know, I don't, you know, I was 37. I was in a relationship then things were pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I, you know, but I was in graduate school. I mean, so I don't know what was going on there. I mean, there was, <laughs> that's just a big life fog in, in my, yeah. you know, yeah. that, was, that was a decade of all I thought of was finishing school, but the, the first quarter, the first, the first, you know, 1968, was during a time that I, it's, it's actually been on my mind a lot in the last month or two when there was a big rift in my dad's family and, and our little family unit got sort of way on the outside. You know, we were like, we were like sort of cast out for a while. Mm -hmm. It was really hard because I was in high school with my cousin who was a year ahead of me and she was a kind of a massive persecutor of me. And so there was really, you know, between the dysfunction at home and what she was doing to me at school, there was like literally no place. Right. No well, those place. are very chironic experiences. Yeah. And, and when I think about it, and when I think about the, you know, looking back on my life right now, I would say that, you know, you know, if you'd asked me 20 years ago, I would have said, oh, it was like being raised by my mother, which was, of course, you know, it's, you know. Um, Rick D always says, you know, her, my mother's chart looks like Hitler's <laughs> so that that'll, yeah. that'll explain a lot there, um, uh, without having to say more than that, but, you know, but I think that this other experience was what left me really feeling that, that there was nothing. I mean, that there was literally nowhere I could go. Mm -hmm. You know, there was home wasn't safe and school wasn't safe and there just was no safe was wow no safe, you know well linda just keep in mind with all of those transits that the chiron experience of sag in the second house is going to be one of expanding your awareness to hold on to your sense of self-worth well, it's been a life, a life. So looking journey. at <laughs> you, you said something about getting into a house after you'd broken up with a relationship. Well, breaking up with a relate one relationship is the time where you start to rebuild your sense of self value and worth because you conceptualize things differently. You get back to recognizing who you are. You know. Yeah, I think that really makes sense. And, and I mean, most of these dates are kind of around, um, um, the 95 date would be, I was finishing grad school and getting ready to get a job, you know, so that I, it was, it would be, that was like a big leap of self-worth there, you know, right. just finishing and then moving actually into a job that I intended to stay rather than the 10 years of nomadic money earning I did in grad school, which was great. I was making more money in grad school than I was in my first job out wow. of grad school. Yeah. So it wasn't a financial problem. It was just like not being settled anyplace. So I don't, I mean, I think it's, this is really interesting. 
and I don't want to hog any more time. Yeah. So and you know what you'll find, Linda, as you sit with it, I had the same reaction you did when I first looked at my dates. I was like, I don't, that doesn't really, I don't remember anything at my third square or my <clears throat> opposition and just give it a few days. I mean, nothing may come up, but I bet you you'll have little snippets, little whispers uh, of the, those times in your life. And it there's a thread, there's a common thread being told, a common a story being told, and it's still being told. It's still being told to your own self. Well, so I think I think this is why that like this work, this Chiron work is so valuable. Oh my gosh. You know, because of of you know, if whatever else is going on in your chart, that thing is happening. And that and that's a like a problem to be worked on all of life. So Okay, so, Teresa, I took a look at your chart and your Chiron is at seven degrees Capricorn in the third house. So it is right beside your six degree Mars. And just as chance would have it, the asteroid angel is there as well. So with Mars being the direction of your life, and Chiron helping you to take the journey of healing yourself, I suspect you've been quite the proactive self-actualizer. Well, um, I was born in a family that, that uh, was all about finding out who you are in religion. So all my life, I've been on that path pretty much. Um, do you have any dates for me in there? Yeah, so I'm looking them up. Let me share my screen, Teresa, but I also, okay, so your first square was around October 21st, oh, 1967. 67 that would have been in ninth grade <laughs> beginning of of high school traumatic really yeah. well for many people too yeah well i was the only one that came from my grade school and and went to a different high school <laughs> so i was pretty much all alone mm. didn't know anybody you know from the area right school and then your um, opposition was October 21st, 1988. Well, that was when things were really starting to shake up in my life. Yeah. Um, you, you also have Cerberus at five degrees of cancer. So you would have been going through some things that you would have found to be more uh, hellish than average in, throughout your life at that time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's that was like, you know, right before the first divorce. So um, mm -hmm. that was pretty bad. Yeah, 1988. Why? Why is it always happening on my birthday? Is that funny? That's I don't think that's you're not just common. A, an interesting person that way. It's not yeah. normal. And then we're going to go to your Chiron return uh, at seven cap. So that was, hey, Erica. Hi, uh, sorry, I'm so late. <laughs> no problem. So that was give or take uh, November 21st, 2002 give or take a few months well that was um the third marriage beginning of the third marriage and what's that supposed to be the return um yeah so you have a better sense of yourself at that point right okay um i think i did um that's I, I interesting be that's that. because that was like right that was right at the third marriage <laughs> yeah beginning of that third marriage yeah wow. wow so i wonder if there was any um 
there was a full circle moment, not necessarily a moment, one moment, but experiences within around that time, around the marriage, um, that would give you clues to what you were really supposed to be bringing healing to inside your yourself around that time. I mean, you don't have to talk about it right now and you may not even know what that is. Um, but that's, you know, the current return can be, honestly, I don't know. I've heard some really rough stories and I've heard some really beautiful stories, kind of like Saturn returns. I've heard some really, I got a promotion. I had a baby. I was so happy. And then I've had some really crappy stories. So it doesn't, it, you know, you get what you get. <laughs> I'm a firm believer. It has everything to do with how consciously you are tackling your path yeah, and your lessons. And it has to, you know, if I think you're facing it, I was, the heavy telling, ones are easier to handle. Yeah. I was, I think I was telling my daughter, she's about to have in a couple of years, her Saturn return. And she's, she's scared about it or, she's has this trepidation about it and I, there's nothing to fear really um in fact this is probably one of the best quotes remember of, of, of the whole zane lecture was if you're afraid of a transit then you shouldn't be looking at the astrology because <laughs> it it's not that's not the purpose it astrology no, needs right. it opens us up um it's not it's not for for any trepidation, but the truth is to the degree that you probably need to be shaken, you will be shaken. Like you just said, Rick. Um, and that, that goes for all of us. So hopefully as you know, in the passage of the next few days and next few months, those dates will come together for you. Um, and you know, it'll, it'll start to make more sense because there is a, there's a theme, like I keep saying, because it is, and I, and I keep connecting the dots and you'll, you'll still, you, you will keep connecting the dots for yourself. It's not, doesn't end with your Chiron return. Yeah. And I think that that slide you had a little further back regarding the, um, the victim, the persecutor and the healer. Um, I think we, we were earlier framing it in terms of perpetrator victim maybe rescuer that that might have been the way we were thinking yes yeah um that to me feels very important because i have known quite a few people who can point to their childhood trauma that they then refuse to heal from they mm -hmm. will not do the work and that's exactly what puts them into the mode of the perpetrator oh yeah mm. Those I, I know that guy. <laughs> that, yeah. that's, if you find a perpetrator, you have found somebody who has refused to heal. Yes, yes, yes. I was telling Rick uh, this afternoon, I know someone who has gone through their Chiron return in the last few years. This very big event happened in his life. And I thought to myself, oh, wow, that's going to be that could be a really heart opening experience for this person. They lost their father. Um, I, I got to tell you, this person has Chiron opposing Pluto. And a lot of people that I know will refer to this person as a big bully. So they haven't, they haven't faced their, their wounds because you know, he was probably bullied, but um, yeah, I mean, it's all wonderful when we can have these wonderful conversations about healing and, you know, the spiritual journey that we can, you know, take, but not, we know that not everybody is going to take that, that work on it. it right. not. They don't want to, for whatever reason. With the last few minutes, we have a few people who haven't had a chance to speak. If anything has struck you as a question you would have for us, by all means, please chime in. And Erica, you didn't catch the opening where um, I was 
offering that if anybody is interested, they can send me their email address and I will send you my notes because there are many things that w did not make the cut to be discussed. And there I was- I would love those. Yeah. And also I wanted to ask about a yod that I have to my Chiron. And also, what do you think about King de Chile to Chiron when that comes around? Because um, I have a yod from um, my North Node and Venus to Chiron in my natal chart. Uh, say that again. Okay. A yod from Venus to Chiron in your natal yeah, chart. Yeah, finger, finger of God yeah. to my Chiron from my destiny and my Venus. To my Chiron. In so the Destiny and Venus are in sextile? Um, no, they're in conjunct. Um, okay, so there is nothing. So the North Node and the North Node and Venus are sextile, and mm -hmm. they're okay. both in conjunct right. to my um, Chiron. What house is it in? The Chiron, it's in the yeah. second house. Okay. You might have said that. But I, I also know. have Jupiter there, luckily. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> are so they, values are the, how are close people. are they? Uh, well, Chiron is at five, Venus is at four, and the North Node is at three. So it's not exact. Which is but probably those two yeah, but that's close. For a, for a yacht. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So your key point is Chiron is the apex in the second, the second house. house. In Scorpio. In Scorpio. And yeah. your path, and I say your is path for your north Gemini. node. Your north node is the path. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to be integrating and moving towards. And Venus is going to facilitate that. So and so that's learning because it's mm -hmm. in the ninth house and philosophy broadening the upper higher mind yeah and I've been on that track since I was about ten years old and I was disagreeing with everybody and asking a million questions and driving everybody <laughs> crazy and I'm but still you know, doing those questions this. were the were the catalyst for your healing yeah I mean this is what that's I was what it was all do. about. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. My Good poor thing. parents. <laughs> What's that? My poor parents. <laughs> if anybody needs uh needs help figuring out the dates where you had those date, you know, those key milestones, the first square, the opposition, the the, the next square and the Chiron return, you can um I think we're out of time, Susan, but I can uh reach out to you. And uh, we can look those up for you. How's that? Does that sound good? Yeah. Um, well, I'm think... just wondering about the keen to Chile to your Chiron. What do you think about that? Because that makes everything over the top, right? Right. Obsessive. It's, it's an obsessive determination. Mm. So which planet is in keen to Chile? None of them are, but I figured out the King de Chile to all of my planets so that if anything ever hits it, I know. Oh. <laughs> it's 165 degrees. It's like 20 to 21 Aries. When anything, anything, 20 to 21 Aries, it's King de Chile to yeah. my Chiron. Yeah. That's an interesting observation. That's Thank you great. so much for being with us this evening. Thank you all. This has been really so much fun. Um, I won't forget about you, Susan. Um, thank you to Rick D to 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 let us do this this evening. And, yes, indeed. Um, to you. everybody, he have actually a already threw a comment in that we did a I great know. job. So nice to hear. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Um, thank I can't you wait to see the support. video. I'm so sorry that I missed We're gonna it. We're going to have a video, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> A real live video. Um, On everybody, I hope this was uh, some somewhat insightful and interesting. We'll do it again. <laughs> Not Chiron next time. Something else. <laughs> <laughs>